Joining us now is a doctor, a man who has a Rhodes Scholar to his name, was an NFL player, was amazing in college football as well, somehow found enough time to also become a neurosurgeon. Ladies and gentlemen, Myron Roll. Yeah, Myron! Woo! Doc. What's going on, boss? Should I, I didn't say Dr. Myron Roll. That's... You earned the title doctor. Like that, I should have 100% called you Dr. Myron Roll there. I just said Myron Roll, so I take that back. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Myron Roll. Yeah! boy, Dr. Myron! a boy, Doc! Okay, Doc, I just got sent this information uh, to me just moments ago and wanted to talk about this because this is an amazing thing. Myron's experiences as a neurosurgeon medical service provider treating coronavirus patients at Massachusetts General Hospital has led him to believe the conclusion that more is required to combat COVID-19. Specifically, availability of personal protection equipment through the Myron, Roll Found Myron L. Roll Foundation, Dr. Roll is attempting to reduce the PPE challenges. He will provide, listen to what this doctor is going to do. He will provide 1,500 face masks to two organizations that endeavor to altruistically provide for all communities. The organizations receiving these are the Appalachie Center in Tallahassee, Florida, while Florida State University, Myron has seen the outreach programs at Appalachie Center, where those in need in the local Tallahassee community receive much needed care, and the boys and girls club in boston massachusetts good on you doc wow. good on you doc what has it Thanks. been like to battle against this thing we talked to you at the very beginning of this thing and now we're a couple months later what has life been like up there in massachusetts yeah it's um thank you for having me again pat i appreciate it it's uh it's been it's been um better i would say uh, i would say our hospital is no normalizing again we've opened up our um, operating rooms to allow surgeries to happen again i just did three brain surgeries yesterday four the day before that so we're starting to uh, increase the volume of patients again. Me too. Our, <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Uh, um, our ICUs are uh, are sort of turning back into what they typically you know treat patients for. Uh, less COVID patients. I think we had maybe 27 COVID patients and about 70 at risk. So we're allowing patients, families to come into the hospital more now. Uh, Non-essential workers are coming back. So things are starting to uh, turn the corner for sure. Great work. Let's go. Great work up there. Without you and the other doctors and the frontline people, we wouldn't be in this position that we're in. Let's speak about the position that we're currently in right now. Everybody's saying that the Arizona corona rate is going through the roof. Then there was obviously the thought that, well, the virus won't survive in heat. So everybody thought Arizona was comp uh, potentially okay. Texas numbers are going up. Is this something as we go forward in our existence that's going to be viewed like the flu like yes people might get cases but not everybody's going to die from it i feel like the beginning of this thing was if you get the rona you're going to die are we at the point now where we know a little bit more about it where potentially this is just going to become a part of our lives going forward you're absolutely right i think so i think so i think we have enough data points enough data entry enough information enough research uh enough you know sort of objective data to sort of um understand and predict what may happen when the rise in trends may happen and obviously we're working incredibly hard to get antiviral therapies and the vaccines and antibody tests done so that we're able to be uh, more out in front if this were to spike again at some other point of the year uh, if a pandemic were to come again especially one that is analogous to this i think we'll have a better handle on it just because of not only anecdotal experience that different hospitals have had but the hard data the hard science that a lot of these um, very impressive intellectual people are sort of working through in their labs day to day. So, yeah, I think it's be something that we're going to, you know, sort of see and have to mitigate, um, you know, yearly. Uh, but I think that we're going to have a better response for it as we go forward. For yeah, because sure. that was the big thing, right? Nobody knew anything about this thing. So whenever we first saw the first reactions and people are talking about hallucinations and potentially passing away to the older community and, and people that are immunocompromised and things of that nature, we had no idea what to happen. Now with three months of research and studies, I feel like you guys in the doctor community are much more comfortable if you do have to treat uh, another COVID-19 patient. Is that accurate? Absolutely. We have a pathway now. We even have an order set in our hospital, for instance, at Harvard, where we you know, can type in a dot phrase, basically, and then it just takes us to an order set of who you need to consult, what images you need to get, what labs you need to get, what antibiotics you need to start. It literally it just auto populates for you because we have so much information of how to treat these people now. So instead of standing flat foot and being off balance like we were hit the first time when this came around, I think we're much better prepared and much more equipped to do what we need to do. What countries have been doing well on the rollout plan? Because we we saw the AFL, Aussie Rules Football, uh, debuted their round two this morning. And then you're hearing about other countries potentially opening up 
a little bit. New Zealand has no cases. Australia's had no cases. Is that going to be normal for our country with how big we are and things of that nature? Can we look to other countries on how they rolled back into maybe normalizing society again? I think we can. I think you can look at, um, you know, how to uh, reintegrate people back into their normal lives, get people going to uh, their normal assembly activities. Um, but I th one thing that America has done for a long, for a long time is sort of classify itself as being different than the rest of the world and saying that our structure and our way of life is a bit different than others. So it might be hard pressed to get a couple of lawmakers to feel that they should take <laughs> advice or take the examples of other countries. And that's just, that's just a historical thing and just a, maybe a pride thing, but from a hard science kind of deal and kind of looking at it. Uh, outside of our own myopia, I think you can really look at uh, how to reestablish uh, some sense of normalcy, not only just for uh, getting people and the economy back going again, uh, but also to boost the morale, just to have country morale and say, you know what, we, we went through a very tough time, we did lose a lot of people, and we have to understand that. And now the, the goal is to sort of keep our country moving forward, keep the progress happening, uh, never forget those that we lost, and if this were to happen again, or uh, we get uh, a threat of having another pandemic, um, we are better prepared to handle it the next time so that we can um, certainly reduce those numbers of people, not only who lives have been lost, but lives have been affected. There's gonna be people who have been changed for the rest of their life because of this. Their hospitalization, the fact that they were away from their family, the fact that they um, you know, now had to de have to deal with this sort of stigma of having COVID-19 everywhere they go, uh, beyond the fact that, you know, they were able to maybe recover from it, but the fact that you were even implicated in this, you know, pandemic makes it very difficult for people to look at you and say, oh, should I be around you? Should I social distance from you? Do I need to be around you? Do I need to do something else? You're going to have sort of this, um, as you remember, the scarlet letter back in the Massachusetts, right? You had this A if you were an adulteress or something like that. People will sort of socially distance and shun themselves away from you. So there's that sort of social dynamic that uh, it's not really talked about a lot because it's probably not the most pressing issue, but it's something that I think uh, well, underscores all of this. I think the information that you just said about how we are much more prepared for if somebody was to get COVID-19 again is information that a lot of people need to hear so that type of stuff doesn't happen. Because, for instance, if, if a guy in our office had it and he leaves or whatever and he comes back, I assume a lot of people were like, well... This thing was killing people. Boom, we're going to we're going to stay away from them. But that information that the medical field in not only our country, but everywhere has a road path to how to treat it and move forward is something that I think a lot of people hear. And I can't thank enough for sharing that information. It, ma it makes me feel a lot better, by the way. I, I thought there was a potential gloom and doom conversation coming with you. I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy that is not the case. Have you ever thought about running for president? Are you going to run for you're going to run for president? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm 33, so I got some time. But, uh, you know, it's, I, I saw Barack Obama go in like a young man with nice healthy hair and <laughs> left like really gray. So I'm not sure if that works. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, the presidency is not an easy one from what I've been told. But, man, you've been there, done that with a lot of things that aren't easy at all. Um, going forward here, okay, as a country, going forward, when you see these rules that all seem to – I don't want to see contradict each other, but they do kind of contradict each other. So, for instance, for at a football facility right now, they're getting back into work. They're getting tested on the way in. But then when they're in there, they have to wear a mask unless it's athletic. Uh, thus, they're doing something athletic, which is on top of each other. Then when they're not doing it, they have to put a mask on, take the mask off. They shower together. There are so many things that seem to contradict each other. I think that is why the mixed messaging is going. Why do these all seem to kind of go against each other? Can't eat this small business, but can go to this grocery store where everybody's at. Can't wear, don't have to wear a mask whenever I'm doing something athletic on top of each other, but any other time I have to wear a mask. It, none of it really seems to add up. Am I the only one that is dumb enough to be confused by a lot of these things? <laughs> no, I, certainly we all are. And I think it's so, part of the growing pains of trying to figure out what's the appropriate steps. Uh, I had a chance to speak to the Patriots. I'm good friends with the McCourty twins. Uh, Jason McCourty and I play together um, with the Titans, and he, uh, his trainer and Coach Belichick invited me to speak to the team, and uh, you know, just sort of asking me to sort of put it in, you know, layman's terms or put it in a football player's terms. What should I do individually to sort of um, keep myself healthy and then protect my family as well? And I just gave him a few quick things. One, make sure your diet is still good, right? Make sure that you're keeping um, your vitamins and minerals um, up in your body uh, so it continues to boost your immune system because uh, we know vitamin D, you can, you can have enough vitamin D and you can um, sort of help 
these uh, the cells that are able to. I see your writing. You know, <laughs> that, yeah, yeah, yeah. that are able to fight, um, you know, sort of inflammatory or, or, or infectious diseases like this, right? Upper respiratory infections. Uh, another thing is, when I tell them when you go into the facility, uh, a lot of guys go in with their street clothes. Uh, they walk around for a while, dap up their friends, go move this way, move that way. Take off your street clothes immediately when you get into the locker room. Change to your workout gear. Take that off immediately when you're done. Get your street clothes on to go immediately out, right? So for us, when we go into the hospital, we go in, change immediately, put on new scrubs, operate, go see patients in the ED, go in the ICU, go in the wards. And then once we leave, we take those scrubs off, put on new scrubs and get out of there as quickly as we can. I told them about sanitizing all of their equipment, like but almost being neurotic with it, treating everyone as almost as if they are an asymptomatic carrier, even if they tell you they're okay. So I was just going through all those oh. little things that you can do individually. You can't, you can't really do much about the actual nature of the sport. You're tackling people, you're sweating on each other, you're in a huddle, you know, all those things. But the things that you can control, trying to distance yourself in the team meeting rooms when you're watching film, you know, sit two or three seats apart, whatever you can do, that can be helpful. And as long as you do that, I think that you're at least being conscientious that this is still an issue and we're not fully over it, but we're getting there, but we're not all the way done. I don't know how our relationship is with the World Health Organization. I think Fauci even turned on him the other day. who <laughs> was a member of the World Health Organization for like 30 years or something like that. I, so I don't know what information you can believe and you can't believe. You mentioned it, you alluded to it there about how asymptomatic carriers, they said, are actually not carrying or can making it contagious for anybody where that was the big wave i think like a month and a half ago was like even if you don't have it you potentially are spread or even if you don't feel like you have it you're potentially spreading it where do we stand with the asymptomatic characters and or uh carriers in your eyes i think it's something that's still uh that's still obviously being studied but i think it's a risk and i think it's not worth saying you know what i'm just going to take uh the the sort of insight from uh, a group um, that maybe has an agenda or a group oh. that ha hasn't done enough research or a group that doesn't yeah. have enough, um, you know, enough time to sort of study this out, right? We're not five years out from this where we can say, okay, we have good trends, we know where we're going. I think there's still a lot that we, there's a lot that we know and a lot that we don't know. And I just don't think that it's a time to gamble with the idea that, mm, you know, maybe I can go out and, you know, be in a crowd uh, and just really be full, free, vulnerable, like I would, you know, two years ago when this wasn't really an issue. I, I, I think that at this point, nobody is going to blame you for trying to be neurotic with your health, making sure that you're adhering to the behavioral lifestyle modifications, hand hygiene, face masks, separating yourself, doing all those things until we truly, truly have a real good handle on it. We are moving in a great direction. I'm proud of the way the country is going. I'm proud of the way the medical professionals, even how normal citizenry has adapted and adopted this new lifestyle but i just feel like there's still a little more push to go and once we get there i think we'll have um you know a, a, a bit easier time doing it but for right now i would say just keep your foot on the gas pedal and keep moving forward with um being a little bit uncomfortable for the time being i'm 33 as well i don't know how uh, these two humans uh, <laughs> have lived on earth the same amount of time but i'm thankful you did sir i can't thank your brain enough congratulations on all your success thanks for saving the world thanks for donating 1500 masks to a couple of different charities i mean you're a good person and uh i enjoy every conversation we have together thank you so much for joining us thank you pat appreciate it man i think you got to be 35 to run for president or 36 so Figure it out. Figure <laughs> hey, hey, you never. How about me and you do it together? How's that? Hey, oh, wow. yeah. hey. I don't know, man. I think there's. A, I will drag you down, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Myron Roll. Yeah, Doc. Woo. Thank you, Doc. Great conversation. Just did seven brain surgeries in the last two days. Yeah, no big deal. And we've gotten so back smart. to other things other than COVID-19. For instance, I think I did three brain surgeries yesterday, three yesterday, and then four brain surgeries <laughs> the day before that. Uh, today, I'm just kind of hanging out, talking to an idiot. But <laughs> <laughs> so it feels like we're, we're... It was overly positive, but also skeptic. still... A little skeptical. skeptical, yeah. yeah. Which, Which I think is the right... Good news for us. And I think he said we've been doing a good job. Yeah. That, Dr. Myron Rose said, we've been doing a good job. Thanks, Doc. Hey, good hey, for we us. Have been. Yeah. I thought there was going to be a lot more give and take there. He did say that this is something we're just going to have to live with going forward, which I feel like a lot of people are thinking. So when you see those cases rise, I assume that there was more flu cases as it went on. I don't know.